Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is a the daily chart, fairly long-term chart of silver. It goes back to December of 2012. And I brought this up because I just want to show you how much things have changed over time here. Now, a really key spot on this chart is going to be this down move here in the price and most of you know what that is this is April 15th tax day Boston bombing hoaxathon uh, if you don't if you haven't seen exposés on that pathetic show uh, you should go and look up PK 22 I think is his name on YouTube he was the one who covered it the best I think it's P E E K A Y 22 but uh, you can find his videos out there a lot of them have been have been censored but people have made copies and stuff but it was a ridiculous show but it's interesting that silver seems to coincide with events we know that the biggest event of all was the capping of the silver price which coincided with the may 1st massacre which also happened to be the same weekend that we had the fake Obama birth certificate produced and we had the fake uh, Osama bin Laden capture. So silver is intricately tied to these hoax events. It always has been. But uh, you can see the increase in the volume that occurred. Now, whether these are contracts, what these are, I don't really care. We're just going to do this for comparison purposes. You can see that there was an unprecedented volume. Again, back out to the weekly, and you can see that's right there. So the run-up into the massive top up near $50 was a increase in volume. An exponential increase in volume made all the volume before it looked like it was non-existent. And the volume has increased exponentially from there. But we can see that it took a tremendous amount of volume to cap, or I should say crush, the price. This was our key breakdown through that very, very strong uh, support line that was around $26. And you can see they blasted through that with incredible amount of power going from about $28 down to $21. So a huge move down that coincided with that Boston hoaxathon. Now, after that volume came in, then the volume just kind of tapered off. And you can see we didn't really get any major volume until we got very, very near the all-time lows of recent history around that $14, $15 price. Then we started to get significant increases in volume that had continued higher you can see that it continued higher here on average but then fell off and then started to ramp up as we're putting this bottom in place to where you can see now that we're putting in daily the amount of volume uh, to sustain wherever we are we're putting in daily the amounts of volume that it took to create that massive smackdown back then so what was once a very very rare volume spike is actually now the norm. What does that mean? Well, it means that they're just churning a tremendous amount of paper contracts to keep prices where they are. And as I pointed out on, on the very, very long-term chart, uh, this could coincide with a bottom and uh, a big blast off. And again, that's totally unprecedented. The last blast off that we had uh, back in 2009 and 10, this, this whole area down in here, you can see, was accompanied by non-existent volume. So that's really important, I think, because what that points out is that they're having to use more and more and more trading to keep things the same. Now, the exact opposite is happening, happening in the real estate market. They're using tremendous amounts of dollars and tremendous amounts of volume to 
keep that thing going. And it is truly a ridiculous market. Now, I've been seeing a number of articles on Zero Hedge and other places. I've done just a little bit of anecdotal research on Zillow. And it does appear that we may be in a topping area for real estate prices. Now, real estate is not like the stock market. It doesn't tend to bounce and then rally. In the past, real estate just pretty much was a steady uptrend, kind of took off and and then crashed during the last recession. Now, let's take a look at NVR. This is a company I've followed for a very long time. And this is uh, one of the home builders. And you can see on this chart the absolutely ridiculous return here. Uh, the return here is actually a 4,500 fold return from 1930, uh, 1993 at 38 cents a share to roughly $1,700 a share is a 4,500 fold gain. That means that every $10,000 invested in that stock today is worth $45 million. So that's a phenomenal gain. What could a company possibly do to produce that kind of wealth? Well, they build homes. And you can see on this chart that the recession and the downdraft in the housing market basically took this stock from almost 1,000 down to almost 250. So it was about a 70% loss in the value of the stock. And then it turned around and you can see what we've done. So really, we just have a continuation of the housing bubble. And that's, that's really amazing that they turned that around. Now, let me show you this story from Zero Hedge. And th this will show you that this is an unreal estate market. This, what's happening is unreal it's uh, there's no explanation and they actually are trying to find an explanation where the money is coming from who's doing this and why because the numbers are so insane that uh, it's just it's incomprehensible that this is even occurring and I'm gonna read this and then start to look at some of these crazy numbers and this is if you own a home in Palo Alto California sell it now from Wolf Richter of Wall Street uh, wolfstreet.com utter insanity is turning south in palo alto a small town of about 67,000 souls including facebook ceo mark zuckerberg about an hour south of san francisco in the middle of silicon valley and part of the nine million people in the vast bay area the median home value in july according to zillow fell to 2.486 million dollars that's still up 103% from July of 2011. These are not palaces. Median price means 50% of the homes cost more and 50% of the homes cost less. These are modest homes, in theory, where the median household can settle down. Drop to $1 million and you get the million dollar shack. But the median price is up only 1.6% from July last year and down 0.5% from the peak in April of $2.5 million. A tiny fraction, really a tiny fraction in Palo Alto means $12,500. The median listed price per square foot is at $1,357, down 7% from June. Prices started plateauing a year ago which means they're now heading south. Zillow, with its usual optimism, expects them to drop only another 0.3% over the next 12 months. The 71 homes listed for sale on Zillow start with a four one-bedroom, one-bathroom condos selling around 770 square feet each in the range of $540,000. Two of them have been on Zillow for 41 days and two appeared 11 days ago. There are also two pre-foreclosure units to be sold at auction and one foreclosed one-bedroom, one-bath condo. It doesn't take long to get into the median price range of $2.5 million and there's plenty, some of them with reduced prices, some of them on the market for over 150 days. And then at the top of end of the pile, a 5,330 square foot home Listed for $17.5 million on Zillow for 68 days so far. 
if the price of the median home doubles over a period of five years as they did in Palo Alto, it's not because that median home has gotten to be twice as big or twice as nice or whatever, but because the dollar has lost half its value with regard to this type of asset. It's called asset price inflation. Central banks have been very effective in creating asset price inflation. Stocks, bonds, commercial and residential real estate, etc., all have skyrocketed. Now, I want to point out here that another thing that skyrocketed along with these real estate prices, of course, is government revenues, government tax revenues, specifically property tax revenues. And those are also revenues that are going to completely crash when these prices come down. There are also consumer price inflation, producer price inflation, wage inflation, etc. In that regard, the dollar has been holding up better. The median rent in Palo Alto is $5,800, which puts even San Francisco to shame. The Zillow rent index sits at $6,318, down about 3% from November last year. Like home prices, rents have plateaued with a southern bias. So it's a money suck, which is fine when prices go up and if you have an unlimited amount of money. But now that prices have hit a wall and if you don't have an unlimited amount of money, the money suck can get painful in a hurry. People are already putting two and two together and are bailing out, including Kate Vershaw Downing, who resigned from Palo Alto Planning and Transportation Commission. Her letter of resignation dated August 9th starts out this way. This letter serves as my official resignation from the Planning and Transportation Commission. My family has decided to move to Santa Cruz. After many years of trying to make it work in Palo Alto, my husband and I cannot see a way to stay in Palo Alto and raise a family here. We rent our current home with another couple for $6,200 a month. If we wanted to buy the same home and share it with children and not roommates, it would cost $2.7 million and our monthly payment would be $12,177 a month in mortgage, tax, and insurance. That's $146,000 per year, an entire professional's income before taxes. This is unaffordable even for an attorney and a software engineer. It's not a place for young people either, despite its Silicon Valley allure, unless they want to bunk down together and with their combined high salaries pack into a median house. Hacker hotels, they're called. That's fun for a little while. And then Bloomberg explains it this way. Palo Alto lost 7% of its 18 to 44-year-old population in the 2000s, the only age group to show a decline, according to census data in the city's report. Those aged 45 to 64 grew by 19% and older than 65 increased 20%. The power behind this rampant home price inflation may be tech, but probably not anymore, given that tech salaries for most employees no longer suffice to live adequately in the town. And foreign buyers looking to get their money out of harm's way and not caring about what price they pay. Reality bus tours popular with I'm sorry, realty bus tours popular with Chinese and Indian buyers are a common sight, with purchases leading to unoccupied investment properties dubbed ghost houses, as Bloomberg put it. But China is cracking down on money laundering, and the U.S. government's anti-money laundering efforts recently stopped ignoring real estate. So foreign buyers, too, may be drying up, as the languishing prices indicate. Many folks have suggested that Palo Alto needs more subsidized affordable housing, though that may not help much either except make life even more expensive for the rest of them. The real solution? As a matter of principle, I don't give financial advice, but if I were out there giving financial advice and charging an arm and a leg for it, I would sound like this. If you own a home in Palo Alto, sell it now. There has never been a more perfect time to sell, except perhaps earlier this year, but that train has departed. Cash out cash out of this bubble while the cashing out is still good. Let someone else st- get stuck with the losses because a 30% loss on the median home of $2.5 million is a cool $750,000, and losses after such a breathtaking real estate bubble can exceed 50% without breaking a sweat. 
if you rode up the gravy train from 2011 and doubled your money and made 1.2 million dollars on your home don't let the market take that away from you that's what I'd say if I were selling financial advice and then I'd send you a bill for an arm and a leg and for crying out loud make sure you don't buy again in Palo Alto because you would just plow your money back into the bubble move to downtown Detroit which is getting cool again and telecommute while laughing all the way to the bank every day you wouldn't be the first one to do it I get chills when insiders tell outsiders not to panic so that is the unreal estate market it's absolutely incredible that they've done this they've done it again they've blown up an even bigger bubble than they blew up last time and those numbers coming out of Palo Alto now the numbers are coming in from around the nation they're coming in from Vancouver they're coming in from parts of Texas some parts of Oregon some parts on the East Coast and my experience has been with real estate that it does not uh, tend to fluctuate go down a little bit and up a little bit it tends to go up 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 and up until finally it starts going down and then when it goes down it goes down very fast and very dramatically and we'll talk to you next time